Just four light years away, there's a planet that looks a lot like Earth. Similar size, similar mass, maybe even a rocky surface. It's called Proxima Centauri b. But don't pack your bags just yet, because the so-called Super Earth it gets blasted 250 times more x-rays than we do. Yeah, 250. This is why you wouldn't survive Proxima Centauri B. Today we're dropping Jeff onto the so-called Earth 2.0. No prep, no training, and absolutely no idea what's about to happen. On paper, it sounds promising. Earth-sized, in the habitat zone, only 4.2 light years away. So we stick Jeff in a suit, shove him out of the lander, and tell him to go make history. He takes one small step onto the alien soil, and that's when everything immediately goes wrong. Sorry, Jeff. See, on paper, Proxima Centauri b sounds promising. It's roughly the same size and mass as Earth. Solid surface, not a gas giant, no crushing pressure like Venus or soul-cracking cold like Neptune. Just Earth 2.0. It sits neatly in the Goldilocks zone, that sweet spot where liquid water could exist, not a frozen wasteland, not a lava ocean, just the right distance for a life-supporting puddle or two. And it orbits Proxima Centauri, star next door, a mere 4.2 light years away. If the universe had a real estate market, this one would be labeled Fixer Upper with potential, close to amenities. But none of that matters, there's no atmosphere. None of that matters, your local sunrise comes with a lethal dose of gamma rays. And none of that matters if stepping outside means your skin boils. Because while Proxima b might look like Earth from light years away, up close it's a very different story. It's like moving into a nuclear wasteland, squinting at the glowing rubble, and optimistically calling it slightly rustic. Let's imagine, just for fun, that we let Jeff step out without his helmet. One small step for man, one catastrophic decompression for Jeff Kind. Within seconds, his lungs implode like a paper cup in a hydraulic press. His blood begins to boil, not from heat, but from lack of pressure. The moisture in his eyes evaporated. Instant pink mist. Why? Because in a vacuum, there's so little air pushing down on liquids that the boiling point drops below body temperature. The fluids inside you literally start to boil and vaporize while you're still alive. See, the planet is constantly bathed in stellar flares from its red dwarf overlord. Proxima Centauri. We're talking X-rays and extreme UV radiation up to 250 times what Earth gets. Over time, all that radiation shreds the atmosphere molecule by molecule, bleeding away pressure until there's barely anything left to breathe or protect you. According to models, if Proxima b ever had an atmosphere like Earth's, it could have been stripped away in under 100 million years. That's a blink in planetary terms. One big flare and poof, your air is gone. Now, best case scenario, Proxima b retained something, but it probably wouldn't be oxygen and nitrogen like Earth. More likely, carbon dioxide, lots of it. Think Venus, but colder. Imagine stepping into a giant CO2 fire extinguisher, only this one is leaking hydrogen sulfide, unfiltered methane, and who knows what else. And without a magnetic field, which Proxima b likely lacks due to tidal locking and sluggish rotation, there's nothing to shield Jeff from the onslaught of stellar wind and cosmic radiation. So now Jeff's just standing on an airless, irradiated rock, getting slow-cooked by galactic rays, x-rays, and deadly UVC, the kind that sterilizes surgical tools, now sterilizing his DNA in real time. In short, if Proxima b does have air, Jeff can't breathe it. If it doesn't, Jeff really can't breathe it. And either way, he's absorbing more radiation than a reactor core during a meltdown. So yeah, we probably should have left the helmet on, or kept Jeff in the ship, or honestly just never sent him in the first place. Now let's talk about the local sun, Proxima Centauri, a small, dim, and violently unstable red dwarf. Cool name, horrifying behavior. This star flares with relentless intensity, dozens of times per week, sometimes multiple times a day. It bombards its surroundings with extreme ultraviolet light, x-rays, and high-energy charged particles. These aren't minor flickers, they're super flares, violent eruptions that release more energy in minutes than entire planets consume in centuries. In 2019, Proxima Centauri unleashed a flare that was 100 times more powerful than the most violent flare our sun has ever recorded. 
For about two minutes, it emitted 14,000 times more UV light than usual. And Proxima b, it's parked just 7.5 million kilometers away, 20 times closer than Mercury is to the Sun. It's practically hugging a thermonuclear monster with anger issues. So when Jeff steps outside, his suit designed for Martian dust storms and light orbital radiation might as well be a garbage bag. After 10 minutes in the unfiltered solar assault, Jeff's internal organs are less functioning biological systems and more boiled vacuum packed lunch. Still thinking about letting Jeff build a base here? Alright then, let's talk geography. Proxima B is almost certainly tidally locked. That means one hemisphere permanently faces its star in a state of eternal daylight, while the other is plunged into an unending starless night. No sunrise, no sunset, just a planetary staring contest with a flaring red dwarf. Forever. So Jeff has options, none of them good. Get baked alive. On the day side, where constant exposure to stellar radiation could push surface temps well past the boiling point of water, depending on atmosphere and albedo, or freeze solid on the night side, where temperatures may plummet to below 150 degrees Celsius, colder than Antarctica on its worst day. Or, in a final act of misplaced optimism, he could set up camp along the Terminator line, that razor-thin sliver between light and darkness where temperatures might be somewhat survivable. Like some peaceful exile between fire and ice. Until you factor in violent planet-spanning windstorms, because when one side of the world is constantly roasting, and the other is constantly freezing, the atmosphere, if one exists, throws a fit. We're talking supersonic jet streams barreling across the twilight zone at speeds up to 1,000 km per hour, driven by the extreme temperature gradient. Jeff barely gets the tent poles in the ground before his base is shredded like tissue paper. And in one final act of cosmic slapstick, Jeff, facing down a rogue solar panel, gets knocked out cold by his own runaway rover. To be fair, one thing Proxima B doesn't try to kill Jeff with is gravity. It's about Earth level, maybe a smidge higher. That means walking, running, lifting, all fine, no floating nonsense, no muscle atrophy like on the moon. That's just enough gravity to feel depressingly familiar, to slowly die from radiation poisoning. The universe is cruel like that. Now, some optimistic models suggest that Proxima B might have held onto an atmosphere, maybe even water, maybe clouds. Maybe the kind of sky you could squint at and pretend it looks a little earthy. But for that to happen, you'd need a few miracles. First, a strong magnetic field to block out the relentless stellar wind. That's unlikely. Tidal locking and a slow rotation probably took care of that a long time ago. Second, enough gravity to actually hold onto gases. Proxima B's got about the same mass as Earth, so that one's a maybe. And third, an atmosphere thick enough to shuffle heat around the planet from the blazing day side to the frozen night side. Theoretically, possible. Realistically, eh. So let's recap Jeff's five last minutes. He got dropped onto a planet with no breathable atmosphere and a generous helping of vacuum, got flash fried by a stellar flare so intense it would make the sun blush, battled hurricane force winds in a place where the weather forecast is basically good luck, got irradiated, beat frozen, and knocked out by his own flying equipment. Jeff's vitals flatline. The AI, ever the showman, cues up also Spratch Zarathstra, because nothing says you're toast like a dramatic space overture. So long, Jeff, you were wildly unprepared. Proxima B is a sobering reminder. Earth-like doesn't mean survivable. We look at exoplanets and dream of second homes, but the truth is, most of them would kill us faster than you can say terraform. So yeah, go ahead and marvel at the stars. Maybe send the robot first. Can anything actually live on Proxima B? Well, maybe microbes. Super tough, radiation-resistant ones with a grudge against comfort. On Earth, we've got extremophiles that survive boiling acid, crushing pressure, deadly radiation, and even the vacuum of space. So yeah, some Martian-level cave bugs might be partying underground, thriving in cracks, crevices, and chemical soups we'd never touch but anything evolved to survive on the surface of Proxima B would look less like a puppy and more like a cockroach built by DARPA, wearing armor. In the end, space isn't trying to kill us, it just doesn't care if we die. So stay curious, and maybe stay home. Like the video? Hit like, subscribe, and drop a comment for more existential crisis fuel. And to see what fresh hell space Jeff lands in next.